Welcome home, Jesse. Please bring her back. I'll do anything. Anything. Preacher is back for season three on AMC, which means we get to see much more of the outrageous, blasphemous, and extremely violent life of Jesse Custer. If you thought that was violent, well, the comic books are even more fucked up. Don't believe me? Stick around for the next few minutes and I'll prove it. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we'll be breaking down each episode of Preacher Season 3 right here on GameSpot Universe. Jesse Custer was born to John Custer and Christina Leangel shortly after John returned home from the Vietnam War. John was a U.S. Marine from Texas and Christina a runaway. They first met when Christina spat in his face as a dare from some of her war protesting friends she was traveling with. It is the mucus that binds us. Yes, it was love at first spit. They soon had a child and named him Jesse. Now, Jesse lived a pretty normal childhood filled with a ton of John Wayne movies. That is, until his mom's past caught up with them. Christina's mother, Marie, sent two thugs, Jody and TC, to track them down. By the way, we'll meet all three of these iconic characters in season three of Preacher. So Jody and TC took all three of them back to Marie's plantation, Angelville. Again, that's the setting of season three. This is where Jesse finally met his god-awful grandma, who forced his parents to marry and raise their son to be a man of God. They were basically grandma's prisoners. Now, it wasn't long before the family tried to escape. Unfortunately, they were caught and Jesse's father was murdered right in front of him by Jody. We've seen flashbacks of this moment in both season one and two of Preacher. This would be the final time Jesse would ever shed a tear because, of course, his idol John Wayne never cried. No hard feelings. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, Jesse's upbringing in Angelville was horrifying. He was homeschooled by his mom while his grandmother taught him to love and fear God. His worst lesson came after he was caught cursing at Jody for having killed his dog. Jody even nailed the poor animal to a fence. When Marie heard the profanity spew from her grandson's mouth, she sentenced him to a week in the coffin. What's the coffin, you ask? Well, Jesse was put into an airtight coffin fit with an air hose that would be sunk to the bottom of the swamp and then he'd spend a week down there. Some of you might even remember this reference back in the season two premiere. After the punishment, Jesse would never see his mother again. Grandma no longer needed Christina around. She had Jesse. So she was seemingly dragged away and killed by Jody. Now, following this, Jesse learned to be on his best behavior, spending most of the time with his one and only friend, Billy Bob, who was an inbred cyclops. One day, Billy Bob, who was just about to marry his own sister, witnessed TC getting intimate with a chicken. Yes, you heard that right. So TC slit Billy Bob's throat and he died at his best friend's feet. Jesse cursed at TC and again, he was punished. This time he spent a fortnight, that's two weeks, in the coffin. The only thing keeping Jesse sane during this time period? John Wayne. The cowboy legend was a childhood hero of his and a coping mechanism. The Duke was always there when Jesse needed someone to talk to and to help steer him in the right direction. Eventually, Jesse escaped from Angelville, moved on from his traumatizing past, and met Tulip O'Hare. They fell in love and lived a life of crime together, but Jesse's family tracked him down once again. He ditched Tulip in order to keep her safe from Jody and TC. Only years later did she finally find out why. She held a grudge for quite some time. When he returned home to Angelville, he spent an entire month in the coffin, and when he resurfaced, he was completely broken. Jesse would finally turn to his faith in God and become a preacher. People said before you came back here, before you were a preacher, you did things. The preacher would take up his practice in Anvil, a backwards and ignorant small Texas town. Problem was, he spent more time drinking than preaching. One night at the local bar, Jesse spilled all the secrets of just about everyone in town. The resulting bar fight nearly killed him. The next morning, Jesse prepared to give a sermon to a packed congregation. It was only this crowded because everyone wanted to know what the hell was wrong with their preacher. During the sermon, Jesse was struck by a supernatural entity, Genesis. I said chocolate chip. Say it. Say it. Dug -a, dug -a! Wrong Genesis. The result? An explosion of energy that destroyed the church and entire town, killing everyone except for Jesse. 
Now, some background on Genesis. It is the unwanted offspring of an angel and a demon that escaped heaven and fled to earth, looking for a mortal body to merge with. It's so powerful that even God left heaven after its birth. When Genesis merged with Jesse, it gave him a powerful gift, the Word of God. Anything Jesse commands must be obeyed. Be brave. Tell her the truth. Open your heart. Be brave. Tell her the truth. Open my heart. Coincidentally, at the same time, Jesse reunited with Tulip, who had hitched a ride with a 119-year-old vampire, Cassidy. Together, the trio has one of the most epic and violent road trips in comic book history. Throughout Jesse's quest to find God, the comic series featured an ungodly amount of sadistic and twisted characters, including the unstoppable and unkillable dual pistol-wielding cowboy, the Saint of Killers, Arseface, who tried to commit suicide like his idol Kurt Cobain, but failed, as well as the crazy Christian cult, the Grail, and Hair Star, which attempted to protect the bloodline of Jesus Christ. And yes, eventually Jesse would return to Angelville and have to face his grandma and her thugs once again. Just like old times, right kid? Now, I'm not gonna tell you exactly what happens in the books because I don't wanna spoil you. Plus, you'll get to see this family reunion in season three of Preacher. You're a scumbag. <laughs> I'm glad you came back. Me too. You up for a fist fight? Oh, I think I've weed a bit. 